Gulf Injustice Podcast, the official podcast of Detained in Dubai with Rada Sterling. Welcome to the Gulf Injustice Podcast. I'm Rada Sterling and this is a special edition on a breaking story. I'm going to be interviewing Kenny McCaskill, the MP for Scottish resident Connor Howard, who's been arrested in Greece on a Qatar-issued Interpol Red Notice, and he's awaiting extradition proceedings. Kenny McCaskill is the former Minister for Justice in Scotland. Obviously, this is a matter not so much for Greece, it's a matter for Qatar. You know, so I'm on to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office saying Greece can't look behind the warrant. Greece have to implement the warrant. The only argument would be if there was, you know, a right threat of life or something like that that you'd have in some route running to China or someplace like that. So what do they, what do the Foreign and Commonwealth officials do? They get a phone call to me from Wendy Morton, the Minister for South Europe. So I speak to her to say, that's very nice to meet you and you know, whatever, but I think, you know, it's not your job to which she says, oh yes, I fully realise where you're coming from. This was Thursday night. I'll get consular officials onto it. And I said, well, it's got to be Qatar because we've got to go. I get consular officials then saying, we can't implement, we can't interfere with legal process. And I go, this isn't legal process. This is diplomacy. This is about staying to the Qataris. You've clearly got it wrong here. This isn't Pablo Escobar. He's a daft boy from Trinidad who's, you know, got caught up in carrying something. Why would you want to send a plane or two police officers all the way to Greece to pick him up, to bring him back, you know, to release him? He's not carrying half a million pounds worth of cocaine. I email, I, we've been in touch with the Qatar Embassy in London and I got a wee note back from them saying, oh, this is a matter for the British ambassador in Qatar to go to, to speak to Qatarese authorities. I mean, it's, it's not hard to work out, you know, somebody in Dominic Rab's office just phones his Qatar counterpart and says, you can't be serious, guys. You cannot be serious. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, Qatar hasn't actually, over the past few years, been very responsive to diplomatic efforts to intervene in anything. Um, but in this case, I just think that it's terribly negative for Qatar. He wasn't carrying anything. I mean, it's a herb grinder at the end of the day. It, oh. And they're calling it a marijuana grinder. But anyway, they let him go. And then yeah. claims that he has hemp oil, which isn't even a crime, obviously. It's a legal product in Greece, and it's a legal product mm. here. So Greece, it can't possibly extradite him because it's not dual criminality. And then we're, you know, we're, we're going to see him locked up for quite a while, though. They, another three weeks at least, and then potentially days, another yeah. three to four months until the preliminary hearing. Yeah. And this happens all the time, though. Qatar's detaining a lot of British nationals in uh, Spain, Ukraine, all over the place on these frivolous red notices. And that's where I think the British government needs to get involved and say, look, you've got to stop doing this. And that's the diplomacy. Poland used to extradite for anything. And, you know, I remember being at the meeting when Germany and Ireland went ballistic and just said, this has got to stop. This is costing us a fortune. It's an abuse of process. And the Poles stopped it. It's yeah. also fair to say that the Qataris Investment Bank has been all over Scotland in recent years because Qatar, as we all know, has got money to burn. So they've got financial interests in the UK that the UK has leverage over because certainly I was invited to a private dinner at one stage and I know senior Edinburgh financiers who are, you know, looking to find, you know, housing you know, deals with Scottish local authorities where they can, they'll put up the money. And, you know, I, I, because... It's like China, they're sitting with more money than they know what to do with because of, you know, uh, LNG. Um, yeah, I mean, they're buying up, I think, the Ritz they bought up. They've invested in British Airways. They've got investments all over the place in the UK now. Yeah. And then they're trying to attract our best, you know, top engineers to go to Qatar and build up the country. And I've got several British nationals detained over there at the moment. So, yeah, yeah it, it seems like it's very one-sided at the moment. And they, it yeah. seems like they feel that they can just pay their way and do whatever they want. And they kind of feel like they're immune to anything. I, do, I just don't yeah. think they're getting much pressure from any other countries. I mean, Australia's got a, uh, someone detained there as well, and the Americans, and they're just not receiving that much pressure. Well, it's media pressure that seems to work with the Qataris. You would have thought they would be mindful of not just, you know, having been privy to Amnesty International 
pressure about how they treat the, the itinerant Bangladeshi and, and South, South uh, Indian workers. You know, at the moment, I'm looking to speak to the Qataris ambassador on Monday, if you'll speak to me, and also get a grip of the British ambassador in Doha, because I think this is a case where the British ambassador in Doha has to be going to the Qataris Department of Justice or whatever to say, you clearly cannot make this. This is some administrative error. We understand you're you know, very concerned about drugs, so are we, this isn't, you know, this isn't that, this is something minor, and, you know, this is not what an international arrest warrant is for. An international arrest warrant is meant to be for rape, murder, serious drug dealing, financial crimes. It's not meant for something that is, frankly, trivial and wouldn't even appear in a district court. You know, uh, it's ridiculous. It's an abusive process. Yeah, and there's, there's no reason... I mean, Qatar, the normal response is we can't intervene in a legal system. Certainly the Qatari authorities can intervene in their, their own system. They have a completely different system to us. There's no separation. So if someone in the royal family or someone in any position of power wants to intervene in a legal case, they do it all the time. It's very standard. And there's nothing to stop them removing and cancelling that Interpol notice and extradition request very quickly. So I think with that intervention from the British government, I think they will probably choose to go that route because what are they trying to prove? This is not a financial case, so they can't extort money out of him as they've done in other Interpol cases. So all they can hope for is that he's extradited. I think that they know that that's not going to happen. So at this point, it's not very positive for them. They're not getting any positive press out of this. It's going to escalate the campaigning and the media cycle and everything. And if they did extradite him, it would be absolutely more damaging to them than anything. It doesn't make any sense. No, I think you're, you're right. I mean, you know, it's one press of a button. I mean, the UK has, and, and Scotland courts as well, have dealt with extraditions from Middle Eastern countries in the past. The UK as a country is so used to receiving these extradition requests from countries that have no basis in requesting the, uh, the, the person to be extradited, their abuse of Interpol notices. But we're seasoned to dealing with that now. And that's why we give bail and we don't take them very seriously. We often don't even arrest people at the airport if they're on Interpol. But other countries, and America is the same as well. If you're on Interpol from Qatar and you arrive in America, they do not arrest you. They'll, they'll inform you that there's a red notice and you have to go and deal with it, but they don't take them seriously because they know about the abuse. And the biggest abusers of Interpol are Qatar, the UAE, Saudi, Turkey, Russia, and China. And we shouldn't be taking those countries seriously when it comes to Interpol just because they happen to be a member of Interpol, which is almost a pay to play um, crime database. I mean, what I've been doing as well is um, lobbying for a reform to Interpol, obviously, but also for countries to standardize the way that they deal with extradition requests. I mean, Greece really should have given uh, Connor J uh, bail in, in, this, in this case because we've seen it so much. And it's likely at the end, statistically likely, that um, any request to Qatar is going to be denied by a European country. So it's so unfair and against, you know, violating his human rights, basically, to keep him in that arbitrary detention. And that's possibly something that the UK could also impress upon prosecutors in Greece, that if by chance it goes to this next stage which would be a three to four month hearing that at least the greek authorities should seriously consider giving bail to someone who might have a claim against them for his wrongful detention at the end of all of this process after 20 days if greece if Qatar doesn't come for them then the greek attitude changes so they'll say well if you're not that fussed about you know coming for this person why are we that fussed about detaining them if you can't be bothered coming in 20 days our, our whole attitude scales it down. That doesn't do anything for Connor being able to get home, which is what we want, but at least it would get him out of, out of jail. But hopefully, by the time we get discussions with the Qataris um, embassy, hopefully, and the British ambassador on Monday, we can get some pressure brought to bear because at the end of the day, this is diplomatic, not, not legal, as the as this British government's trying to say it is. It's about the Foreign Commonwealth Office saying, you've got one of our citizens, your country and our country are good friends, 
why are you abusing the rights of one of our citizens? Stop it or there'll be consequences. Now, Greece, um, on <laughs> other occasions, has bailed people within three to five days. So it's not automatic um, that they would keep them for 20 to 30 days. It's just really dependent on the locality that you're arrested in Greece and how experienced that particular location is with um, abusive notices. And it's the same in Spain. Um, they've become acclimatized to these Middle Eastern notices, so they don't uh, keep people in jail for that three to four weeks. So initially, they, they keep them in overnight and let them go on bail. And in Italy, it's the same thing. Again, we're seeing much more bail happening. So really, with that diplomatic pressure, I would expect that that would be the outcome. This is probably of all of the cases that we've seen from Qatar, these extraditions, um, I think this one is probably the one that's most likely to be resolved uh, with diplomatic intervention. And that's because there's no individual involved. So it's not a, an individual in Qatar who's seeking perhaps compensation or accusing someone personally of embezzlement or fraud or something more complicated like that. So there's no vested interest. It's actually coming from the Qatar authorities themselves. So therefore they are in the power position to be able to withdraw and cancel that notice. I think with FIFA 2022 coming up, they should really be watching you know, what, watching themselves as far as scaring off tourists and uh, investors in the future. The only thing that always strikes me as rather perverse is I do know because of my involvement with Lockerbie, Musa Kusa, the former foreign minister of Colonel Gaddafi, who was one of those on the arrest warrant, far further up the food chain in terms of who they wanted to get in culpability than Abdul Basit al Magrahi ever was, is in a six star hotel in Qatar. Uh, at some stage, I might you know, start beating the British government around the head about that because uh, if the Lockerbie trial is kicking off again, Musa Kusa after Gaddafi was probably number three in terms of culpability. The British got him out. He, he turned and was negotiating with the CIA and MI6 and they got him out before Gaddafi fell, brought him back to the UK and then let him go to Qatar. But he now lives in Qatar in a six-star hotel, which I've never been in, or I've never been in a six-star hotel, but uh, he's apparently got a whole suite there. How he pays for that, I don't know, whether that's British security, American CIA, or what he filched off the uh, Libyan people. But that's another factor, because, you know, if they're holding Connor, why are you holding Musa Kusa? Oh, that's interesting, yes. That could certainly be used as a pressure point too. Um... Yeah, and my staff who did meet him said, Musa Kusa is an evil man. You know? Yeah, it's, in, it's intriguing the whole Qatar relationship with the UK uh, lately, you know, since, since the problems with the rest of the Gulf. Um, I mean, they've been trying so hard to develop those diplomatic ties here. So it seems to me that pick and choose your battles. Don't go after a little tourist mm. and make all of these problems when you're really trying to and they are dependent on that relationship now that they're separate from the, the Gulf. So you'd think that they would be trying very hard to please at least America and, and the UK as far as diplomatics are concerned. Thank you so much for your, your real attention here. I mean, yeah, you responded so quickly and I'm so grateful. Well, I'll keep you posted whether the Qataris ambassador does give me an audience on Monday. Equally, I should get a hold of John Wilkes, the uh, UK ambassador in uh, Doha, and I think I will be less obsequious with him and a bit more demanding that he actually starts doing what he's paid to do, which is to go and represent the interests of UK citizens and start telling the Qataris to lift this absurd international arrest warrant. Yes. And, you know, we just keep the pressure up because I think you're right, Brad. I think the, uh, you know, the Qataris don't want bad publicity. Hopefully he'll be responsive mm. to you anyway and doesn't just take the whole, we don't get yeah. involved in the legal system. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell, I mean, I think I'm well placed having been a lawyer for 20 years and the Justice Secretary for seven and a half years to tell him that's frankly bollocks. And also, I just don't think it is, you know, there is a legal process in Qatar. Equally, this is diplomatic. This is about them saying, you have got it wrong. You go in and say, well, hi guys, must be a mistake here. We know where you're coming from, but you've got this wrong. This isn't Pablo Escobar. It's not, you know, half a million pounds worth of cocaine or heroin. It's nothing like that. I mean, you know, this, this is just, it's absurd. This isn't, uh, this isn't drug dealing. I know where I'm coming from, having dealt with all these warrants before. 
fantastic to have spoken with Kenny McCaskill and for him to be helping out his constituent Connor Howard, a Scottish uh, national who's been detained in Greece pending a Qatar extradition request.